fellows, we're going to tell you a little bit about how you can apply for our programme. I'd like to welcome Kate Body from the BSL Interpretation Services, who's joined us today. And normally we would be meeting face to face with all you know, new intended participants in our local regions. COVID's put a stop to that, but I hope by the end of this session, and if there is the possibility to ask some questions, you will be more enlightened in how you apply for this programme. So what we're going to cover at this presentation, um, we're going to say a little bit about ourselves. We're going to um, give you a little bit about the programme as well, how to apply and what it's like from a fellow's perspective who's been on a startup programme. Um, and we've got two, as I said, amazing fellows who are going to share their stories with you. As I said, hopefully we will have time for some Q&A, but don't worry, um, we've got backup for you after the event itself and the event that you want to ask some frequently asked questions. So who we are. The School for Social Entrepreneurs um, has been in existence since 1997, and it supports more than 1,000 leaders each year. Those are the individuals that want to create social change. They tackle a huge range of social and environmental problems while creating meaningful jobs and lots of volunteering opportunities, often for people who are most in need. We in SSE in Scotland have been delivering programmes of support since 2002. You may have come on the, on the call thinking, oh, are we going to be talking about SSE in Scotland? But no matter where you are in the UK, and I'll say a little bit about the partnership, what we deliver in Scotland is exactly the same as what's delivered down south. So whether you're in Winchester or you're in Birmingham or you're in Devon or Cornwall or Yorkshire in the northeast, a startup programme has identical elements to anywhere where you are in the country. So don't worry. A little bit about SAC itself, its founder, Michael Young, set up the first school for social entrepreneurs in Bethnal Green in London in 1997. And our current CEO is actually one of the first ever students who graduated from that programme, which is quite phenomenal, I think, really. Um, Michael Young founded various organisations. He was a serial social entrepreneur. And although this might be your first um, association with the school, Michael Young founded Witch Magazine, the Consumers Association, the Open University. And I think um, on looking back, he, he created about 60 odd social enterprises and charities in his time. I should also say that as a network of schools, we have two international schools. We have schools in Canada and in India too. So yeah, we have, we have UK schools but we also have um, international schools. So a little bit about the actual programme overview itself. In 2012, we were delighted to receive investment from Lloyds Bank and the Bank of Scotland and the National Rotary Community Fund. Since then, we have supported over 2000 social entrepreneurs and there are various stages of that, that support programme. You have come on today to hear about the startup programme. We also have a, a unique innovative model called Trade Up, which supports those that have potentially been on startup to increase their trading activity. And we also have a scale up programme, which allows those that want to potentially move into another area or they want to buy a building or employ more people. So we're fortunate that this particular partnership with the Lottery and Lloyds Bank and the Bank of Scotland covers all stages of social enterprise business development. I can't believe we're going into our 10th year and we, you know, in 2012, it seemed no time at all when we said we, when we had a 10 year investment. And here we are in our last year and recruiting for the startup programme. As I said, we deliver in nine regions across the UK and applicants will come on board, we'll support them and, and helping them set up their, their, their social enterprise or their charity. And all you want to do, I believe, will be to create social change or environmental change in the communities you serve. 
So now we've got our little film that hopefully will um, shed some light on what the programme is all about. Um, sit back, take a couple of minutes and enjoy. Okay, so let's have a start. So whereas um, often parents might might sign up for baby classes because either they're... I think we've got some technical issues, so let's just get a couple of minutes. It's always the case on Zoom, isn't it? <laughs> so can I check that uh, you can see the video and you're listening to it? Is the sound okay? can't we can only see the youtube um yeah. we can't see the actual full video on the screen thank you thanks andrea andrea's our technical was along with louise excellent that's it andrea go for it Oh, you have the sound. Let's try. Let's let's try in a little while, Andrea, if you want. We can come back to the film if you're okay. Or do you just want to carry on? Such a creepy film as well. We can maybe try again at the end, Andrea. And if not, we can pop the link into um, an email to everyone at the end of the session rather than you worrying about it. So can I check if you were able to hear the sound or what was the issue? I can't hear anything, Andrea, at the minute. Okay. Yeah, we can try that again. Let's okay. just try again later. It's no problem. We'll send on the link anyway. These things happen. It's not a problem. We'll just follow on with the next slide. Okay, so how do we support you? The programme itself is normally, um, it's got 10 to 12 days there, but actually I think it's 14 days of practical learning. But anyway, um, we spread that over a year and you will apply for the programme. There's quite a long recruitment process because we want to make sure that we get, you know, people that are going to support each other through the programme. But the programme starts in October 2021. And for, and because of the pandemic, you know, we very quickly had to adapt to online learning. So we are foreseeing that we will continue with an online offering. But if face to face, you know, does come back, because it's so important when you're bringing a cohort of 20 people to come together, it's so important that potentially face to face learning would be so much better. But, you know, we, we've delivered programmes over the last year online it worked, but certainly we appreciate that bringing a cohort together face to face would be so much better. But we'll be guided by government guidelines, as we say in the, in the slide there. We are an action learning um, provider. And if you're not familiar with action learning, and from my own personal experience, I, I can share my experiences with you. What we do is we um, take our cohort of 20 people and we split them into groups. And with our expert facilitators, an individual would come to a session and actually air some of their barriers for them moving forward. And we get a, a very, very confidential space for them to get some things off their chest, basically. 
And setting up a social enterprise or a charity um, can be really, really lonely when you're on your own. You feel as though you've got the world on your shoulders and sometimes you can't ask for support. So having the opportunity in that confidential space for you to, to air some of your concerns and with your peers supporting you, you should leave an action learning set feeling that the weight of your shoulders has been lifted off and also that you can move forward. So that barrier has been removed. Action learning is our methodology and we set little benchmarks for you throughout the programme and actual, actual action learning sets will support you in moving forward. We're really fortunate that with the partnership with Lloyds Bank and the Bank of Scotland, we have dedicated staff members who voluntarily have signed up to support this program. So each of our students are allocated a mentor and that mentor will be with you throughout the program. We normally meet a minimum four times a year, but that relationship can be anything you want it to be. Some mentors are happy with just meeting up once uh, every couple of months. Some are happy to get updates on a monthly basis and some really get involved in the development of a student's business. So we're really fortunate to have some expertise from the partnership. There is a grant of £1,000 and also our grants officer Diane Cameron is going to have a little chat with you shortly. So I'll leave Diane to um, ask, you know, share her um, information and you can access um, ask questions if you want at the end of the presentation. But what's really important about this programme is that bringing 20 like-minded individuals together, it's just so refreshing for people and students on startup that they've got their little tribe. They're, they're like-minded individuals that, you know, you're all setting up your social businesses and there's a real opportunity for you to bounce off ideas, share concerns, and in study sessions, you know, we, we certainly do have dedicated um, elements of training, but peer support is so vital for you to hear from each, from each other and, and learn from each other, basically. So why is SSE different? Um, a traditional school, you know, you, you would have a teacher, you would have lessons and you would potentially have homework. We're not about teaching you at SAC. It's about experiential learning. And we're definitely not about SEs and giving you, sort of, as I said, homework and exams. You, you'll hear from people we call expert witnesses. And you also hear from practitioners. Expert witnesses are normally people who have potentially gone through our programme. They've, um, they've, they'll share their stories warts and all, and they will also um, give you an opportunity to ask them questions that might actually relate to your own development. You won't be bored. You will get lots of inspiration from these experts and practitioners. The practitioners can be accountants, they can be marketeers, they can be entrepreneurs that have gone on and been really successful. But there's lots of interaction with your fellow cohort members um, and some some of the sessions for yourself it might be new skills that you've got to learn so there might be many challenges but at the same time there will be lots of fun and lots of interaction and um, Louise our learning manager is going to tell you a little bit about the sessions later on in this presentation so I'll leave that for her to to tell you about. So why is SSE different? Um, one of the things that our students have told us through evaluations is, as I said, when you're setting up your social enterprise, you can be very alone. You feel as though you're doing this on your own. What we're really good at is putting you in touch with networks of support. You'll have your, your, your students and your cohort, and as I said, they'll be a great support to you. But we're really good at connecting you with other networks too. If you don't have um, an enterprising background, that's not a problem because lots of people come to us having come from various walks of life. What we're interested in at the School for Social Entrepreneur is the individual, and we can help you skill up by the various study sessions that we deliver. 
This last year, and you'll hear from our two fellows, resilience has certainly been one of the elements that has got our students through the pandemic. And I can, I can see already the change in those individual, individuals that have come on our programme for when they first started out. They were, you know, they were a bit reticent about how they were going to set up their business. And um, they were, you know, they weren't confident. And here they are a year and a half later, and they're now managing themselves. They're leading their organisation. They've got staff and volunteers. So building that confidence, creating leadership skills, and also, um, you know, being resilient um, within themselves and their own organisation. So we had 100 people who signed up for the startup programme. We have to whittle that down to 20. And it's a long application process. And we want to make sure we get the right people because as a peer support programme, we're conscious that people can bounce off each other. They learn from each other's experiences. Some may be further ahead in their social enterprise development but we definitely want people who are motivated and they're willing to share their experiences. That's what a peer support programme is all about. Um, in their business, they have to have a clear social or environmental purpose. They need to be the person who is funding the organisation. They need to be the leader. We can't have, you know, if, if there's three people that are part of an organisation, it's only one person that can come on this programme. And normally that would be the leader of the organisation. As I said earlier, um, you don't have to be entrepreneurial. You can come from, you know, any background and we can support you learning all the new skills to get your social business up and running. One of the things that I'd like to say in this session is that we put a lot of commitment into planning, our startup programme. There's a lot of time and effort, as I said. We have to, you know, introduce expert witnesses, practitioners, and study sessions do take a lot of planning, as I said. So we're looking for, for commitment from our cohort of 20 to attend these study sessions. And we, we often give the timetable a year in advance. So we have uh, a document that stays all the study sessions. So really, there's no excuse for not knowing the dates, but of course we know that sometimes family issues come up, sometimes work issues come up, sometimes when you're setting up your social enterprise, you sometimes have to attend really important meetings. As long as you can keep the learning manager up to speed with these events, then fine. But we certainly are looking for 80% attendance on this programme and our grants manager, will, I'll say a little bit more about that. Also, you have to run your business in the UK um, rather than overseas. It's, a, it's in their criteria that running or starting these businesses has to have a UK um, element, a UK residency. And a couple of other things we just want to share with you is that over the last over the last year, SSE has put a lot of effort into wanting to make sure that the, the programme supports people who previously have had barriers to accessing this type of programme. And we sincerely welcome applications from everyone. Um, and I'm not going to you know, um, list them all, but you know, working with people from deprived backgrounds. We are really keen to support people with a disability. And um, recently we, we um, issued a statement on anti-racism as well. So working hard to make sure diversity, equity and inclusion are part of everything that we do. Also, you don't need any educational qualifications to access our programme. Life experiences means a lot to, to, um, to some people and for us, as I said, it goes back to the motivation, people having a clear, you know, purpose and social aim for what they want to do whilst on our programme. And like I say, social entrepreneurship might be a new um, term to you, but, um, you know, if you're passionate, if you're motivated, then we will support you with the dedicated skills for, for you to get your programme up and running. So don't worry about it. So I'm now going to pass you to Louise Simpson and Louise is our learning manager and she'll say a little bit about the elements of the startup programme too.
Thank you, Tracy. Yes, good morning, everyone. It's great to see so many budding social entrepreneurs ready to embark on a social entrepreneurial journey. Um, I just want to say a little bit about the content of the startup program, just to give you an, an overview. So as Tracy has mentioned, the program will commence from October and that's with a cohort of 20 per region. I think there was a couple of questions just asked there in the chat. So and what you'll learn in the program through a mix of learning, as, as again, as Tracy mentioned, this will be through action learning sets where you'll address any key challenges and issues in smaller groups. And also in the main programme, there will be sessions with expert witnesses and witness sessions from fellows, people that have that experience of going through where you will be beginning on your journey. And you'll learn about taking your idea to reality. So starting out with testing and developing your idea through the various methods, building a sustainable enterprise that will seek stand you from sustainability through growth as you proceed through the course of the pro, um, program course and um, we also talk about your business strategy your business model canvas how you're going to adapt and thrive through your social entrepreneurial journey in terms of your business model canvas marketing and all the different aspects that that it takes to run a, a successful social enterprise There'll also be areas such as measuring your social environmental impact, keeping your mission and values at the heart of everything that you do, which is so vital when you're growing and you can be busy looking at so many different strands that you have to, to, to build your, your enterprise, but keeping that at the heart and the core of everything that you're trying to do and achieve within your, your communities and those that you're trying to help. We'll also be looking at areas such as finance, obviously, and legal structures in terms of the, your board, who you need around you, those key people that you need to support you through your journey, um, not just the teams that you work with, but the, the board structure, your legal incorporation, in terms of companies house, HMRC will cover all of that with you as well. So giving you the real, building those foundations for your success from the startup. Um, the other areas we'll look at as well with you will be marketing. Who are you? What are you doing? How are you going to reach beyond your communities to enable you to collaborate, to enable you to partner with others, collaborate? And what you will hear from, you're going to hear very shortly from two of our graduates from last year's startup program, now fellows of the School for Social Entrepreneurs. And what they will advocate, I'm certain, I'm hopeful, is this peer support. The peer support on your journey throughout is sharing those issues and challenges that come along. And also the ideas that are formed from those sessions that you can then take away and work with each other and share those challenges and issues and we have many ways that you can all communicate with each other not just it doesn't just the work doesn't stop at the end of the session and that many have formed long long-term friendships not just and also those collaboration opportunities opportunities to extend your networks as well so you're going to hear from fellows who have been on this journey and understand what it takes to run through the startup program. And um, so all of these ideas, pitching and presenting and other ways of, of building and, and reaching out to corporates, which is perhaps something that many of you may, may not have considered, but can actually be so valuable in terms of building long-term funding and revenue generating opportunities. So the application process, the next steps um, from next Friday, the 5th of March, if you can read through the guidance notes, I'll put the links at the bottom where you can um, access all the information you need. Applications before one o'clock on Friday, the 6th of, 16th of April, and you can apply via video uh, submission, audio or by 
application form, whichever you find easier. Um, interviews will take place in May and May, June time. And then there will be a selection panel in June or July, where will you get the opportunity to pitch and present your social enterprise idea. And then offers will then follow from the end of July and then looking to start in each of the regions from October later this year. And please feel free to use the chat to ask any questions. I'm now going to hand you over to Diane Cameron, who's our grants manager, who's just going to run through an overview of the grant procedure for you. Hi, Paul. Um, so I'm your friendly grants manager. I cover Scotland and also Yorkshire and the Northeast. And I work with a team of four other grants managers who, if you're, because I see that in the chat, you're from all different areas. So you would, you would have the team at your local school, and then you would also have a grants manager who would talk you through all the, the lovely people. And, and obviously we have the bag of money too. So the, the grant for this uh, programme for the startup is £1,000. It's paid in two instalments, one at the beginning, which is £750, and the other um, is later on in the year, usually it falls around about June time, because we'd be looking for you to attend 80% of the programme. Um, and at that stage, I would be asking you, can you tell me how you spent 600 pounds of that first 750? And once you've done that, and as long as you've attended the programme and filled out your surveys uh, that, that you'll get from head office, then we'd pay you the balance of that 250. Um, we, we keep it quite low key and we want you to report on how you spent the money, but it's a lovely, simple Excel spreadsheet and keep receipts for anything over £100 um, and show them to us. So it's quite a simple process. Now, normally the grant is used by most people for travel and accommodation. Obviously, we don't know what people will be using it for this year, but you can use it for anything that's going to help you attend the training or help develop the business. Things people might use it for are running costs, legal fees, marketing, insurance. Uh, but you know, if you're on the program, you've got any questions about spend, then you would just be in touch with me. Um, I've got a few questions in the chat. You can actually um, get the grant as an individual, but if you've already moved your organization forward and you have set up a company, and you have a company bank account, that grant can be paid to the company as well. One of the questions, I think it was from Karen, she was saying she set up a limited company. We would be looking for you to have an asset lock um, if that was the organisation that you wanted the money paid for. But that is something that we would talk, talk to you about. And you would also cover it, um, obviously, in the legal structure element of the programme. If you've not got a set up, that's fine. But if you have got set up, we have options for that as well. Um, not much more from me. Um, the one thing that we do ask you for is if you are working with uh, children or adults in a vulnerable situation, we would be looking for you to have a, a basic disclosure or DBS. Um, but that's again something that we've talked to you about if you've got, you're successful and you can use, if you don't have one, you can use your grant in advance. Um, it, we don't normally, we want you not to spend money um, retrospectively, et cetera, but you can use that for your DBAs if you need one. Um, and really, apart from giving out the grant, we will try and share useful documents with you. We would like you to be putting relevant insurance and policies in place, and we have templates that we can share with you throughout the process. Um, and really, that's all from me. If you've got any questions, let me know. Thank you. Thanks, Diane. Um, I'm now going to introduce you to who better to hear from than two of our graduates and fellows of the School for Social Entrepreneurs who went through the startup journey last year and graduated in October. And that's Darren Osborne from Bra Talent. And I will put the link to his website so you can see more about Darren's work and Bailey Adiotti from 
Dacoma events. And again, I shall put her details in the chat for you. So you're going to hear more about their story, their experience on the journey through start the startup program and what that experience has meant for them in terms of building their social enterprise and also what's happened since. So I'm going to, without further ado, I'm just going to put you in the capable hands of Darren and Bailey. Thank you. Morning everyone. Um, thanks to SSE for trusting me to represent their, their programme. <laughs> um, so just a quick intro, my name is Darren Osborne. I'm one of three directors of um, Bra Talent and we are a group of teachers um, and creative practitioners um, that deliver educational programmes in film and visual art and in music um, for young people. So mainly we, we work with um, schools and youth groups and things. And it's all about sort of addressing imbalance within the creative industries. Um, there's a huge um, percentage of people from uh, privileged backgrounds. So we are kind of, as teachers, we spotted some of those barriers in, within education and we set up Broad Talent to try and address some of those um, to try and make career pathways more accessible, I guess. Um, so I thought I'd start just talking about why I joined um, SSC. So, I mean, starting any business can be really lonely, but I think even more so for social entrepreneurs because there's so many people just don't know what a social enterprise is. So you can't talk to your pals or talk to your family about it. Um, and I think I just wanted to find a gang um, or a tribe, as Tracy said, of, of people to sort of share that journey with who I could share challenges with. Um, with a background in filmmaking, um, when, when we started, it was all about you know, getting people who were inexperienced like us and building a crew to make films. And that was something I really valued. And I really wanted to sort of um, remake that for the social enterprise. So that was the main reason for, for joining the School of Entrepreneurs. It really um, sort of appealed to me. Um, I was going to a lot of courses. I don't know if this might resonate with other people. I was going to a lot of courses and workshops and things on social enterprise. And it was a real frustration meeting some people and then Sometimes you see them again at another workshop, but you just went, it just wasn't going quick enough building those relationships. So the, the opportunity to um, go through this program for a full year with the same people, seeing them every month, um, it's sort of like taking driving lessons, but in a week intensive, I guess, you're really quickly building that network. Um, and yeah, so that was why I applied and um, just to build my gang. Um, the interview view process was really kind of relaxed and stuff as well, which was brilliant. I remember being in the, the sort of, um, and you guys won't get this because it's not in person, but we're in a kind of boardroom and there was a table for all these people, which was really intimidating walking into, um, but everyone on it was just so sort of welcoming and supportive, um, which was brilliant. And then was really happy to be accepted. And within one session, um, the gang was established. Um, I think the, the program that was run was just so well organized and, um, so thoughtful and the people that they'd chosen to be on the programme, just everyone got on, everyone was like-minded, everyone had similar goals and um, similar aspirations and were, um, although their businesses were very different, were facing very, very similar challenges. Um, on top of that, the, the programme itself, the stuff that we learned was invaluable. Um, for me, I'm, well, I was terrified of um, a lot of the behind the scenes stuff, so we do with finances and things like that and even the business structure. Um, and so the, the programme really helped with that. And also there's people on the programme, you know, my, my peers that had similar um, anxieties and it was good to share that with them. Um, another great thing was um, the staff from SSC. We had um, Elaine who was in charge of us and she was just an absolute legend in terms of building that rapport between everyone and organising everything. Um, so I can't speak highly enough about, about that as well. And also the facilitators that were brought in, everybody had a background in social enterprise and understood it, which I thought was really important because I'd been to workshops in the past where that maybe wasn't the case. And you're speaking to, I don't know, say an accountant or something, but they weren't really focused on social enterprise. And I found that really difficult. But everyone on the SSC programme, all the facilitators were, um, I guess, experts in social enterprise. Um, it was also the other thing that was great about it was it was time to commit it was opportunity to commit time to working on your business rather than for it and I think that was really needed because um, when you're starting up the business 
there's so much to do that you just kind of get bogged down with all the tasks. So getting that time every month with people, a full day session, just thinking about how to develop the business was, was really invaluable. And it forced you to do it. Um, obviously the um, COVID hit about halfway through our, um, our journey and that had a huge impact um, on things, you know, getting thrust into a world of, of Zoom, which I don't think Zoom existed before. Um, online lectures, um, communication was very different. You meeting in person, you had opportunities to have a little intimate conversation with everyone in your team, and that was kind of gone. You weren't able to read each other's sort of body language and things. So there's been lots of challenges, um, particularly with people's sort of mental health and well-being as well. But I think that um, SIC dealt with that really well because they sort of let us lead the way. They kind of put it to us how we wanted to learn and what would suit us. So if we were doing Zoom sessions, was we made sure there was lots of breaks. We never done full day sessions. It was maybe split into two or three sessions over the course of the month just to try and make it a bit more digestible. So no one wanted to be sitting in front of their, their laptop all day. Um, and I think that really helped. There was constant feedback um, being seeked from the participants of it to make sure that they were sort of getting it right for us. Um, and of course, obviously there have been lots of people on, on the course that weren't that comfortable with technology so it was a big big step for people you know having to deal with that on top of um, all the, the impact they had on everything else in life but I think that the, the fact that they took the lead from participants really did help um, we set up things like in, the Mon in Monday we had hugging a mug which was brilliant that was one of the things they did for us just um, so every Monday we'd meet up just there was no pressure to join it was just go and have a chat discuss your challenges that you've got um, I think that really did help people um, take away from that sort of lonely aspect. It was maybe coming back into things. Um, the relationships within the group have really been maintained as well. We've got a WhatsApp group we, we finished in June, I think, but the WhatsApp group is still really active. There's people who were in our group that I've been collaborating with on projects. I think at least five or six people where whether I've been working on stuff for them for their business or them for my business. It's um, we've really supported each other and it's the go-to place if you need anything is stick something in the WhatsApp group and if there's not someone in the group who can help you, they'll know someone that they can sort of put you in touch with. So um, yeah, I think if you're thinking of joining, I think if you're looking for, for that, if you're looking for a gang, um, this is the right sort of um, course for you to apply for and I'd really encourage you um, to try and get on it. Um, and as I said, the staff and everyone are really supportive as well. So the, the, the program's great. Um, did I mention peer support that Louise said I had to mention? I can't remember. Um, so yeah, in the spirit of SSE, I would say as well, if anyone wants to drop any messages, if they want to ask me any questions at all, if you want to join my gang, um, send me an email or a message, I'd be happy to do that. And also the video that didn't work ever, make sure you watch it because it's brilliant and it articulates why the programme's great much better than I can. So I definitely recommend you watch it. And I'll pass you over to Bailey, who's one of my gang who we actually met at a few workshops before and then we ended up being on the SSE programme together, So, um, which is brilliant. So I'll pass you over to Bailey. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Bailey. I run Decamite, which is um, a group of project managers and event specialists. Um, and we also help empower women into starting up businesses as well as just um, leadership and confidence. So I saw um, the taster fit this SSC just as you're on today. And I thought, let me go along and find out what it's all about. It really appealed to me because it felt as if it was everything that I would need as an, a social entrepreneur. As Darren said, I had gone on lots of short courses and they were more business focused. And um, yeah, they didn't last for a while. It was lots of short courses. So I thought to commit a year um, for my enterprise and for myself, it really, really did appeal. So lo and behold, on the first meeting, I met Darren there and he had this amazing idea of um, supporting youth, but it actually turned out to be the same idea as my friend. So I rang her straight away and said, I've met this guy who's got this idea. And she was like, that's my business partner, Darren. So that was actually quite good because in that room, when I was there with Darren and Elaine and a few other entrepreneurs, I actually saw that as a room of opportunity. 
And as you're sitting in this room right now, see this as your room of opportunity. I've noticed that you're dropping your social media links. That's great. Take that on board. And I think that's a whole ethos about SSE. They want you to connect and be connected to each other and they want you to stay in touch with each other. So if every room you go into with SSE, make sure you use that opportunity to connect with whoever they present you with. Um, and even as you go along to like the panel and things, you'll meet more people and just take that as another opportunity. Um, the thing that I loved about SSE is as an entrepreneur, you have so many ideas. And I guess as entrepreneurs, we sit in a different category of people and um, we probably get boxed in. You're an entrepreneur and at SSE, they let me think outside the box, not only thinking outside the box, but actually living outside the box and not being confined to the walls that limit you. And by being outside the box and living outside the box, um, it also let me think about every person as I interacted with them, the opportunities that they had. And as Darren said, there was 20 of us on that course and I was sitting there. I remember in the first course, I sat next to a girl called Rachel and she had this idea about hiking outdoors. And I thought, wow, that sounds fun. That sounds really cool. And there's a few other people that I'd recognize. Um, but the immediate ones that I thought, oh, there's so many opportunities for me to collaborate with so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. -and -so. But as the year developed, I started to collaborate with the people that I had never thought about collaborating because once again, it was that room that presented the opportunities. And it was only, I think it was in November, I even collaborated with Rachel for an outdoor hike with the women that we support. So when you're on the um, program, see everybody in that room, on that Zoom room, as somebody that you can collaborate with and take time to get to know people and take time to even just have a quick catch up with somebody. And that's something that SSE will promote. And even with the facilitators that come in with the witness sessions, it's people that have gone ahead of you. And um, there's no problem that you'll ever encounter that nobody has ever not encountered basically. And SSE will always introduce you to people that are doing something similar to you or maybe are just there, they've done it, they've got the t-shirt, they've worn the hat. I remember in our first session, our first witness session, um, somebody was talking about the first grant she ever applied for was £6,000. And now she, she said in that room, she won't apply for a grant less than £400,000. And my jaw was on the floor. I was like, wow, imagine that. I was thinking, I'm trying to apply for a grant for £6,000 and I can. Um, but it also opens you up to see that there are so many possibilities for you and SSE are there to support you with everything. Um, Tracy touched on action learning sets. And when I first was introduced to the idea of action learning sets, it sounded like a therapy session. And I had done action learning sets with another organization and it felt like a therapy session. But when you do it with um, School for Social Entrepreneurs, it actually, um, is a session where you can offload about a problem that you've got. But the good thing about it is there's accountability. So the next time you have an action learning set, your peers will ask you what you've actioned from what you said you were going to action. And they'll make sure that you're still following through and you're moving forward. So that problem, that thing that was holding you back is not holding you back anymore. With COVID, yes, it did present some challenges and we weren't in the comfortable settings that we used to meet in. But it also presented opportunities for growth and opportunities in our own organizations, but also opportunities for us to learn um, together and online. Um, the mentors were amazing. You'll get a mentor. And it's just, I think one thing I'll advise you is as much as you give to your mentor, they'll give back to you too. So if you can't invest in your mentor, still touch base with them. Maybe you might not be ready, still touch base with them, still keep them in the loop of what you're doing and they'll always be there to support you. It's um, just like with SSC, they'll continue to support you for as long as you want. And I can't thank um, Tracy enough for just her support as being, I know you guys are all in London and other places, but in Scotland, we have Tracy and Tracy will be your advocate. She is the person that does an introduction for you when you're not even in the room. And there was many a time when Tracy encouraged me and um, I had an idea and I had so many no's, but Tracy was like, why don't you go for it? Why don't you just do it? And 
um, it's led to amazing opportunities for Decamai and also to Louise who is just someone who's down to earth and I'm sure you'll all have a Louise in your um, in your cohort so make sure you always touch base with your facilitator with whoever's um, your director because they are there to support you don't see them as someone who's distant from you they're there to support you they're there to champion you on and they're also there to help you so even with some of the um, courses that they might give you might think I'll never use that in my organization I think Louise touched on reaching out to corporates I remember sitting in that and thinking I can't see myself doing that like why would I reach out to corporates and lo and behold in October a corporate organization reached out to Decamai and I went running straight to Tracy and was like what do I do here <laughs> and she walked me through that journey and helped me to establish a partnership so everything that um the program consists of is things that they have really thought thoroughly and you might not expect to encounter that thing in the first year but if you stick in with your social entrepreneur journey you will encounter that and I know as I'm going forward with DEC and my and um, with my staff and everything then um, I'll always have school for social entrepreneurs and I'll always have people like Darren and Louise um, in my corner in my gang cheering me and my staff on. So thank you, Tracy and Louise, for inviting us on. Thank you so much, both, both of you guys, for sharing your experiences. We come on here and we present, but for me, it's not about us. It's about, it's about our students, our fellows who've participated I uh, can't even say it, participated in a programme and sharing what it's like to be a student and how you've really um, engrossed yourself in the SSE process. And for that, we're eternally thankful. Once you graduate from an SSE programme, you automatically go into the SSE fellowship. And it just means that, you know, the apron strings are never cut. Um, it means that we can continue to support our fellows and that's why Darren and Bailey are, are still with us because we have offerings such as fellowship events, there's an online event tonight actually for fellows who've graduated where um, the leader of the World Health Organization and formerly of Oxfam, Oxfam is going to be speaking so you know, there's still opportunities once you, once you graduate from this pro, uh, programme by being a fellow as well. But thanks so much um, to the two of you for sharing your experiences, and I'm sure that our audience will, will, will really have enjoyed um, your stories. Thanks so much. Um, I'm not sure if we've got time for questions. Sorry, I don't have, the screen's not allowing me to see the time. Do we, have, do we have some time for any questions, Louise? Anybody want to get back? To yeah, me? we've got a couple of minutes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Does anybody want to 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 pose any questions for us? I know there's some in the chat as well, and hopefully our team will be answering um, if that's possible. Okay. Will, will there be uh, minutes of this me meeting uh, coming uh, coming out uh, of contact details of other people and their ideas? We've certainly, we're recording this um, event today. So what we'll probably do is afterwards, we'll send the recording and we'll also send links to all the, uh, the people who've been speaking. And, and I just want to reiterate, there's a couple of questions there about, um, you know, what school should I apply for? We're presenting today um, for all schools. Like I said previously, if, you, if we deliver startup in Scotland, it's no different to those, the programme that we would deliver down south. So if you go onto the website, you can, you can download the guidelines, you can look at where you need a school. So don't think that because you hear a Scottish accent today, you need to come to Scotland to, to attend our programme. Um, there are nine schools down south. I think I wrote them all down. London, Ipswich, Winchester, Birmingham, Midlands, Liverpool, Bristol, York and Scotland. So it's whichever schools nearest to you you should apply for but virtually I mean potentially you can apply for any programme I guess but 
it would make sense if we are going to have face-to-face -face learning soon, um, you would apply to a programme that, that, that's, that's near you. Hi, Tracy. I'm not sure if you can hear me. Sorry, I don't know. It was just yeah. in regards to the different locations. Do you, is it, is it kind of 20 applicants per location or is it 20 applicants for the overall programme? How does the number work? No, you're, that's a great question and um, good for us to clarify. It's 20 students per geographical location. Okay, okay, that's fair. And um, sorry, not to hog the, the phone, but just in, in regards to, because obviously I, I'm, in, I'm in full time employment as well, but want to do this kind of entrepreneurial scheme to kind of get involved in, in kind of diversity groups and, and work on developing a specific scope. Does yeah. that inhibit it in terms of being involved in like, being at work and doing this scheme together, or do you find people who are who come from kind of diverse backgrounds or have um, different working backdrops as well? No, in the past, um, as long as an employer gives the person time off, it can sometimes cause a bit of an issue. But if you're fully committed to attending the programme, then we won't, you know, we won't um, make that a barrier to you. So, you know, if you're in full-time employment, part-time, you want to you want to work on your project part-time and um, work part time as well. That's not a problem. Okay. Would you looking for commitment of the individuals to attend yeah. the program? Yeah, no, of course. Any other questions? No. Hello. Um, I'm currently in the process of applying for a um, lottery awards for all, um, my organisation, association. Um, would this affect a, success, a successful application to um, this grant and this, this opportunity? Would it be for the same fund? No, Lucy. I mean, we have students who apply for our programme. They've potentially already applied for other startup um, grant funding. It, it won't hinder you at all if you've actually applied to the lottery. So don't, don't be put off in applying. Hello, I'd like to sign up. So where do I sign up to? Okay, so what we'll do is at the end of, of um, once I've finished speaking, we're going to pop up a slide and that's going to show you the website and contact information for yourselves. Uh, I think Louise is also going to, she's just put it into the chat as well. Um, so go online to the School for Social Entrepreneurs website as well and you'll get other information about the programme, but be um, the website that Louise has popped into the chat is the, the direct website for you to access the application process. Hello. Hello there. Hi. Um, I just, I'm wondering what you might suggest for someone in my position. Um, I'm completely at the start with an idea and I, I've started to look at business plans and, and things of this nature. Um, and I'm looking at enterprise schemes that I might be able to, to use to support me because I, I don't have a lot of business knowledge at all. But your scheme, obviously, there's a long process before it actually starts in October. And um, I had it in my head, I might be up and running by October. So what would your advice be Um given that I'm in a position now where I'm trying to write a business plan and I've never written one before. Um, if I just literally wait until October, that, that's a lot of sitting around and, and doing yeah. nothing other than applying for the scheme. Yeah, I, I, I can feel your pain. But in terms of us as an organisation, the criteria that, that we stipulate is so that we as, a, as an organisation get the correct 20 mm to support the, and each other on the programme. So we have a we have a long listing process, then we have a short listing process, we have an assessment panel, and then eventually we agree a final 20. Mm -hmm. um, it's not going to help you, and I totally appreciate where you're coming from, you want to be up and running. Um, and up our way in Scotland, we have the Business Gateway um, support team, um, which are normally situated within council at East um, down south. Dina, you might be able to help me in terms of support that's quick and easy for Karen. Um, I suggest, Karen, that you might just go to your local school. Where are you based? Are you based in London? 
Uh, well, Essex. Essex, okay. So um, that would probably actually be the London team. I would actually email the London team and they may be able to put you in contact with somebody there who might be able to give you some, um, some overall one-to-one uh, -one support as to okay. signposting you, um, yeah, as to what you can do now, between now and October. Okay, thank you. Okay, everyone, we've reached our time of 11.30. Um, I just want to say thank you so much to everyone for joining us today. It's always lovely to, to um, well, I can now see a few of the people that are on the call, which is lovely. <laughs> and I couldn't see them before, but it's always lovely to actually even see in the chat some of the questions that you're asking about the programme. Please don't hesitate to um, get in touch with ourselves. If we can pop up um, the slide, we will leave you, um, I think there's an email address as well, but it's just to say thank you so much to everyone and please do get in touch with your local school if you want to ask any further questions. We have prepared a frequently asked questions document and we can send that to you um, along with the, the links that were in the chat. But yeah, just to say thank you so much for joining us. And again, thanks to our, our fellows who um, who told their story as well and how SSE supported them over the last year with their social enterprise journey. So thanks everyone, have a good day and feel free to apply. Thank you so much. Thank you, bye. Thank you. Thank you, bye-bye. Just to say, Tracy, I think